You don't know how hard it is for someone in pain to have to stand. It's a great accomplishment when you're able to stand. We need to count our many blessings. When you woke up this morning and your roof wasn't leaking, that's a blessing. When you woke up this morning and there was no bullet holes through the walls or the windows, that was a blessing. Every day ought to be a day of thanksgiving. We have so much to be thankful for. Turning your Bibles to the first chapter of Philippians. First chapter of Philippians. And we will be reading from verses 1 through 6. Philippians, the first chapter, verses 1 through 6. Philippians, the first chapter, verses 1 through 6. You have found it, say amen. amen. Paul and Timothy, the servants of Jesus Christ, to all the saints in Christ Jesus, which are at Philippi, with the bishops and deacons, Grace be unto you, and peace from God our Father, and from the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God upon every rem remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine, for you all making requests with joy, for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now. Being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you We'll perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. You may be seated. Amen. Being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Turn to your neighbor and tell your neighbor, he's working on me. He's working on me. Or you may say, I'm under construction. I'm under construction. With your prayers and knowing of the Holy Spirit, we would like to preach on. He's working on me. He's working on me. Depending on who you talk to, construction zones are not the places of peace and contentment. They are chaotic and dangerous. Most people will say that they are messed up places, yeah. All right. dangerous places, yeah. and oftentimes unsightly places to look at. Yeah. Con construction zones have lots of bumps, yeah. lane changes, starts and stops, backed up delays, falling hazards. They are dirty, noisy, and disorganized, confused, untidy, hectic, and disgusting places. Uh -huh. However, if you were talking to an architect, uh -huh. they would say that the construction zone is beautiful, despite all of this chaos that is going on, uh -huh. because they envision what the end product is going to be. Uh -huh. They know that what they are looking at is a process of progress. Yeah. Uh -huh. There's a show I watch called Property Brothers, uh -huh. and they take a couple and show them a house and how they can transform that house into a dream home. Uh -huh. Most of the people will say, I can't see how you're going to take this space mm -hmm. and turn it into my dream home. Uh -huh. But the property brothers envision what the end product will look like. Mm -hmm. And then they work to bring that vision into reality. Mm -hmm. The process of bringing the vision into reality is the construction of the house, uh -huh. the construction zone. Construction. I am under construction. Contra contrary to how it may look to you right now, in spite of what it may appear like to you, regardless of the smile I may have on my face, 
and prayerfully the delightful compassion and love and disposition I may portray, be beyond the suit and tie and the robe, I don't have it all together. All right, right. You see me standing here and I pray that what you see is good. Right. However, what you don't see and don't understand is that what you're looking at, the standing behind this sacred desk, is a work in progress. Yes. Right. You are looking at a construction zone. Yes. There is some hazardous material that is falling here. There is some hammering and drilling going on. There is some stuff that is taking place in this construction zone that actually should cause me to wear a sign around my neck that says, Danger, Construction Zone, Keep Away. I am under construction. I don't have it all together. But please be patient with me. God is not through with me. Paul said it like this, I count not myself to have apprehended. In other words, I'm not there yet. Yes, I am better than what I was, but I'm not, not there yet. What I shall be, and in some people's eyes, I may even look like I am a chaotic mess. But 1 John 3 and 2 says, Beloved, now we are, beloved, now we are, we see the sons of God. And if thou not yet appear what we shall be, but we know not when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. I am in the process of progress. Yes, I am under construction. Yes, As I said, I am better than what I was, but I am not yet what I shall be. Yes, Truthfully, we are all in the process of progress. All right. We are at different levels in this process, and our progress is different. Yes, is. However, we are all under construction. Yes, construction. The process of putting something together. Uh -huh. Building something for the purpose of something else. Mm -hmm. People build houses to live in. Stores to shop in. Stadiums to have sporting events. Uh -huh. Progress is a movement towards a goal uh -huh. or to a further or higher stage. Uh -huh. Growth or de development. Yes. Watch this. Uh -huh. Good is okay. Uh -huh. But it is not as great as better. All right. And better, although it is greater than good, fails in comparison to being best. Yeah. All right. If you have been sick, and then one day you feel good. Uh -huh. The next day you feel better than yesterday. Uh -huh. And the next day you are at your best. Yeah. This is what we call the process of progress. All right. The problem with progress is that progress can be fatal until the process is completed or finished. Yeah. Finish always seems to be so far away. Yes. In our house, uh -huh. in the basement, uh -huh. in our house downstairs, we have a washer and dryer. Uh -huh. We have a table. This table collects all the clothes that we put on them out of the dryer. Uh -huh. Because we don't often fold the clothes that moment they come out of the dryer. Uh -huh. The table builds up until the clothes are almost up to the ceiling. Uh -huh. You see how many kids I have. My wife and I hate when we finally decide it's time to fold the clothes because before we are finished, finish seems to be so far off. Yeah. Let me tell it like this. Sometimes I will fold the clothes uh -huh. saying I am helping out because uh -huh. I will be doing my part. Uh -huh. So I will fold the clothes to the point that they are not falling off of the table uh -huh. onto the floor when I stop. I didn't finish the clothes but it is better than what it was a little while ago. Yes. However, it is not complete. <laughs> what I have settled for better than what it was, but it's not the best That's right. that it could be. Yeah. Because I settled for it being incomplete. Uh -huh. When I go and try to get dressed for church, uh -huh. I'm going to wear brown. Uh -huh. I can't find, find my brown socks. <laughs> because I settled for better instead of striving for the best. The brown socks are still scattered in the mess on the table. But if I would have strived for the best and finished folding the clothes, the brown socks would have gotten folded and placed in a drawer where they should be. And I wouldn't be wearing green socks with brown pants. Watch this. During the process of progress, 
because we have moved from good to better, uh -huh. we oftentimes will become complacent and settle for better instead of reaching and striving for the best. Yes. Because better is greater than good. Right. So we become comfortable with better. Uh -huh. However, compared to best, better is average. Uh -huh. Sometimes in this spiritual walk, uh -huh. people progress from a world of sin to coming to church. Uh -huh. And they, then they settle because things are better uh -huh. than they were before. Uh -huh. But they are not striving for the best. Uh -huh and seeking the kingdom of God and all his righteousness. All right. They have a form of godliness, but the first time the wind blows, contrary against them, they end up right back out there in uh -huh. sin again. Yes. All right. Why? Why? Because they settle for better instead of reaching for best. All right. Thank, God Thank God that we are not doing this Christian journey all by ourselves. Yes, sir. We find here in our text that Paul is writing to the church at Philippi. Uh -huh. Paul is in prison in Rome, uh -huh. and all the churches that Paul started and helped have not supported him while he was in prison, the only church of Philippi. Yeah. Understand, that prison is, understand that prison in that day and age is not like prison today. Uh -huh. It wasn't run by the state and the prisoner's rights uh -huh. were non-existent. If you wanted a pillow, a blanket, shoes, a change of clothes, uh -huh. someone on the outside right. had to supply that for you. Uh -huh. The people of the Church of Philippi did just that for Paul right. while he was in prison. Therefore, Therefore, what we have here in Philippians, we are privy to basically a thank you letter yeah. to the Church of Philippi. Uh -huh. And the concern and encouragement Paul has for them. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Let's look at a portion of this letter. Paul and Timothy, back to our text, Paul and Timothy, the servants of Jesus Christ uh -huh. to all the saints in Christ Jesus, uh -huh. which are at Philippi, yes. uh -huh. with the bishops and deacons, uh -huh. grace be unto you yes. and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. This is the salutation or greeting. Mm -hmm. Verse 3, I thank my God upon every remembrance of you. Uh -huh. Paul says, every time I think about you, I thank God for you. Right. New Heights. Every time I think about you, I thank God for you right. and the progress that we are making in Christ Jesus. Uh -huh. When I remember where we were uh -huh. and how far we have come, yeah. we've had good days and we've had some hills to climb. Yeah. But when I look around, look around and see all that the Lord has done for us yeah. and the process of the progress that is being done in us, I just have to say, thank you, Jesus. Verse 4 says, Always in every prayer of mine, for you are making requests with joy. Paul says, not only do I thank God for you, because in my time of imprisonment, you supported me. But I pray for you, and it gives me joy to pray for you. Hebrews 13 and 7 says, Obey them that have rule over you and submit yourselves. Mm -hmm. For they watch for your souls as they, as they that must give account, uh -huh. that they may do it with joy uh -huh. and not with grief. Yeah. For that is unprofitable for you. Yeah. New Heights, yeah. I pray for you yeah. when I don't see you. Yeah. I pray for you. Yes, sir. I pray the Lord bless them as they travel on this road of progress. Yes. While under construction, give them the ability to be able to stand and having done all to stand. Yes, sir. All right. Be a fence of protection around them. Yes, sir. Open doors no man can close. Yes, and closed doors no man can open. Yes, Lord, fix it for them. Yes, Jesus told Peter, the devil desired to sift him as wheat. But I have prayed for you. New heights. The devil desires to destroy you in your progress. But I have prayed for you. Verse 5 for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now. Fellowship is your state of being in a relationship with God. Your position in the gospel this Christian walk. Your progress from the first day your start until now. Uh -huh. 
Paul is saying, I understand the process of progress, yes. and I'm praying for you that you don't become complacent yes. in the process yes. and settle for less than the best God has for you. Yes. So many times, you may wonder why Pastor Cleveland always stresses about coming to church so much. Why is he saying that I don't have an excuse not to be in church and give God praise? Why does he stress that I should be at every altar call that is made? Why is he on me about letting go of this one thing that I do after I have given up all this other stuff? It is because I am concerned about your progress while you're under construction. Yes, I don't want you to settle for average, yes, but press towards the mark of the high calling in Christ Jesus. Yes, I want you to reach for and grab hold of the best. Yes, Verse 6 uh -huh. is the key to this message. Uh -huh. There are five key points I want to bring out in this verse. All right. Being confident of this. That he who began a good work in you yes. will carry it out to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. Yes. Paul says, being confident of this. Confident. Confidence means full assurance. Uh -huh. Sure, without a doubt. I know that I know that I know. Yes. Uh -huh. I know that you will make it. You are going to be at the finish line. Yes, you, are. you are under construction. Yes. Right now, right. but you will be completed. Yes. It may seem like it is a long way off, yes. right. but be encouraged. be encouraged. You will be finished. Yes. All right. It doubt it doubt not look like uh -huh. what it appears what we shall be, uh -huh. but we know that we shall appear. Uh -huh. We shall be like him, yes. for we shall see him as he is. Say, I'm under construction. I'm under construction. He's, working on me. He's working on me. But you see, I'm not doing the building. He is. He began a good work in you. It will carry, he will carry it out until it's complete, until the day of Christ Jesus. Let me stay right here. Who is the he? He is not Michael Cleveland. He is not any other man, but he is Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last, the one that made heaven and earth. He is the rose of Sharon, the lily of the valley, the bright and morning star, the lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world. He is the Lord of lords and king of kings. He is the Lord strong and mighty. He is the Lord mighty in battle. Yes, he, is. he is the root of dry ground. Yes, he is the lamb that taken away the sins of this world. Yes, he, is. he is the great God. Yes, he, is. he is the holy God. Yes, he, is. he is the faithful God. Yes, he, is. he is the Lord that provides. Yes, he, is. he is the Lord of righteousness. Yes, he is the God of peace. Yes, he is a battle axe in a time of a soul. Yes, he my strong tower. Yes. He is a wheel in the middle of a wheel. Yes. He is the rock of my salvation. Yes. He is my joy in song. Yes. He is my deliverer. Yes. He is love. Yes. He is peace. Yes. He is goodness and mercy. Yes. He is joy, unspeakable joy, yes. and full of glory. Yes. He is the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Jesus, Lord, our maker. All things were made by him. And without him was nothing made that was made. It is he that is doing the construction. We are under construction. But it is he that is doing the work. He is the architect. He's the master builder. This work that he is doing mm -hmm. uh, is providential. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Jesus is in control. Yes. Like on HGTV, uh -huh. they have a show called Divine Design. Uh -huh. You and I are under construction, yes. and it is a divine design of God. He is doing the work, doing the work. 
Therefore, Paul says, I am confident that you will be finished. Watch this. Not that you will finish, but you will be finished. You and I are under construction. It's a divine design. For we are being formed into his image and likeness. He is the master builder, and it is his design. He told Jeremiah in Jeremiah 18, the word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord, uh -huh. saying, Arise and go down to the potter's house. Uh -huh. And there I will cause thee to hear my words. Uh -huh. Then I went down to the potter's house, uh -huh. and behold, he wrote a work on the weeds. Uh -huh. And the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. Yes. So he made it again another vessel, yes. and seemed good to the potter to make it. Yes. Then the word of the Lord, came to me saying, O house of Israel, cannot I do with you as this potter, saith the Lord. Behold, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so are ye in mine hand, O house of Israel. We are under construction. We are clay in his hand. And he is the one who decides what the outcome is to look like. Go with me for a minute. We are a piece of marble or a block of stone. Yeah. All right. Jesus said to us, I'm going to make you into a wonderful masterpiece. All right. We are, we as stone and marble say, yes, Lord. Yes. I want to be made into something wonderful. All, right. All of a sudden, Jesus turns, grabs a hammer and a chisel uh -huh. and begins to chop and slice away at us. We scream, wait a minute. Uh -huh. You said you were going to make me into something wonderful. Why are you hitting me with a hammer and a chisel right. and knocking stuff off of me? Uh -huh. Jesus said, what I want to make you into, I have to get rid of some stuff. Uh -huh. You have some malice I must get rid of. You have some jealousy that I must cut away. You have some bitterness that needs to be buffed out. There's some lust that must be taken away. Uh -huh. So he cuts and chisels and buffs and grinds. Uh -huh. Not R. Kelly. Remember, it's a process. He puts the chisel and hammer down for the night. Somebody say a night season. Then when we get excited and put our hands into what he is doing and get all messed up, in the morning time, Jesus comes and sees us. He sees what he has done is now messed up because we put our hands in it. Jesus says, what happened? Uh -huh. We confess our sins and say, Jesus, I messed up. I'm sorry. Renew in me a right spirit. Uh -huh. So Jesus turns, picks up the hammer and the chisel, uh -huh. and begins to cut away, grind, buff out our impurities uh -huh. in our life, trying to make us into his image and likeness. Yes, uh -huh. Watch this. The reason why you have been going through that trial uh -huh. And that tribulation is because you are under construction. All right. It's providential. Uh -huh. Jesus is in control. Yes, yes. Seeing if we are in control, we would do things differently. Yes. There wouldn't be any struggle. There wouldn't be any hard times. All right. But let me tell you, it is because of the struggle that you are going to be what God intended for you to yes, be. Sir. Uh -huh. yes, sir. Let me tell you this story. A man was sitting on the, his porch one summer. And in the corner of his porch, a caterpillar had made a cocoon. Uh -huh. While he sat there and looked at the cocoon, he noticed a butterfly beginning to break through the cocoon. Uh -huh. As the man watched, uh -huh. the butterfly struggled trying to exit the cocoon. Uh -huh. He said, I know what I will do. Uh -huh. I will open the cocoon so the butterfly can get out and won't have to struggle. Uh -huh. So he opened the cocoon uh -huh. so the butterfly could get out. When he opened the cocoon, the butterfly came out and stayed on the porch. Uh -huh. The man tries to pick up the butter butterfly uh -huh. to help it fly. Uh -huh. But all the butterfly did was fall back on the ground. Uh -huh. The man did all he could to help the butterfly. Uh -huh. But the butterfly would not fly. Uh -huh. So the man took the butterfly to the vet uh -huh. to see why the butterfly wouldn't fly. Uh -huh. the, the vet looked at the butterfly uh -huh and notice that the butterfly's wings were coated with old molten skin uh -huh. from when it was a caterpillar. Uh -huh. The vet looked at the man and said, what did you do? Uh -huh. 
The man said, I saw the butterfly struggling, trying to get out of the cocoon. So I opened, he put his hands in it, in other words. He opened the cocoon so he could get out. The vet said, that was a mistake. So when the butterfly struggles to get through the cocoon, its wings cause it to be bigger than a hole it is trying to escape. The struggling you witnessed was actually the process of progress. Yeah. See, as a butterfly struggles through the cocoon, uh -huh. the cocoon actually scrapes all the dead old molten skin off of the wings, uh -huh. which enables the butterfly to fly. Right. See, the struggle is divinely designed, it's providential, right. to help make you what God envisioned, right. his image. Right. Image means imagine me as God envisioned. You and I are under construction. Uh -huh. And he, God, is in control. Yes. Yes. This work is providential. Uh -huh. The second point, this work is progressive. Yes. Yes. Watch this. Begun is the past of the beginning. Uh -huh. He, God, God, began this work in eternity past. Yes. Yes. He told Jeremiah, in Jeremiah 1 and 5, uh -huh. before I formed thee yes. in the belly, yes. I knew thee, uh -huh. and therefore thou earnest forth out of the womb, uh -huh. I sanctified thee, uh -huh. and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Yes. Before you were even born, uh -huh. God started working on you for yes. salvation, yes. forming you into his image and likeness. Uh -huh. He began the work before your mother and father had a spark in their eye. He was working on it. Yeah. He said, okay, I'm working on Michael. And he's good. Uh -huh. But since this is a progressive work, uh -huh. I need to cause him the process of human life. So I will cause Michael and Brittany to come together as the vessels. Uh -huh. I will use Michael in place in the human realm. Uh -huh. I've already shown him that in this flesh he can, come, he can overcome the world. As long as he is in me, yes. he will overcome the world as well. Yes. So when I cause Michael and Brittany to bring this masterpiece into the human realm to shape and develop his character to be like me, uh -huh. I have orchestrated some events to take place in his life to mold his character like me. Watch this. Everything he goes through, he needs to ask, what will Jesus do? Right. You thought that was just a bracelet. Uh -huh. Because I have envisioned him in a certain way. Uh -huh. It's a process. Uh -huh. And it's going to take a lifetime. All right. But if he will just trust me and know that it is I that is declaring the end from the beginning. Uh -huh. All right. And from ancient times the things that are not yet done. Uh -huh. Saying my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure. Isaiah 46 and 10. 2 Corinthians 3 and 18 says, But we all with open face beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, uh -huh. and changed into the same image from glory to glory. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's a process of progress. Yeah. Even as by the Spirit of the Lord, Fred Hammond said it like this, Glory to glory to glory to glory to God. Uh -huh. That's process of progress. Uh -huh. Second point, this work is progressive. The third point, his work is positive work. Uh -huh. Positive, measured, or moving forward, or in a direction of increase of progress. Yes. This work is good, meaning having the qualities that are desired. Serving, purpose, or end. Jeremiah 29 and 11. Y'all just bear with me. I know the thoughts I have towards you. Thoughts of good and not of evil to bring you to an expected end. Yeah. Your struggle is good for you like the struggle of the butterfly uh -huh. goes through. It is good for you. Yeah. This is a good work. Yes, it, is. it doesn't always feel good to you, but it is good for you. Yeah. It is good because he is doing the work that is good, and he knows what the end is going to be uh -huh. in his image, uh -huh. the likeness. The fourth point is this. This work is personal. He is working in me and not just on me. Right. If the work is only being done on me, uh -huh. 
then I will only have a form of godliness and deny the power thereof. Matthew 23 and 7 says, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you are like unto witted sepulchres, which indeed appear beautiful outward, but are within full of dead men's bones, and of all uncleanness. If the work is only done on me, I will look holy, but inside I will still be dead. Right. Decay. Decay. I can't understand how people are always trying to take off this and put on that. Uh -huh. Take off that makeup. Take off those pants. Take off that droop. And put on a black suit uh -huh. and a long dress. Look holy. But on the inside, they are a mess. Uh -huh. Filled with jealousy, envy, and malice. Bitterness and hatred. Uh -huh. My father would always say, I'd rather drink from a cup that was dirty on the outside and clean on the inside. Yeah. Then drink from a cup that was clean on the outside and dirty on the inside. Yeah. If the Lord is working in me, then that which will come out of me will be changed. Yeah. The Bible says 15 and 11, Matthew 15 and 11. Uh -huh. Not that which goeth into the mouth defileth a man, but that which cometh out of his mouth, this defileth a man. Uh -huh. If the work is done on me, if you get on my nerves and curse me out, I might try to knock you out. But if the work is done in me and you curse me out, I will do as the Bible says in Matthew 5 and 44. But I say unto you, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. And pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. Because the work is being done in me, and what is coming out of me is not retaliation, but a desire to see your soul saved. Yeah. Romans 10 and 1 says, Brethren, my heart's desire, and pray to God for Israel that you might be saved. He is working in me, therefore my desire is being transformed into his desire. Yeah. The same mind that is in Christ Jesus is working in me. Uh -huh. I am under construction. The fifth point is this, and we're getting ready to close. His work is promised. We carry, this work is promised. We'll carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. Yeah. That's a promise. Mm -hmm. That's an assurance. Yeah. An expectation. Yeah. Jeremiah 21, 29 and 11. Uh, that said expect it in. God is not like man. He doesn't sell it for average. He only works in the best. He doesn't get tired and say, well, that's good enough. He is going to finish what he started in you before he formed you in your mother's belly. God cannot lie. Someone asked the question, is there anything that God cannot do? And the answer is, he cannot lie. Therefore, if he started a work in you, he will finish it. And on that, you can rest assured. Uh -huh. Now, we told you that his work is positive, it's fine. progressive, uh -huh. personal, promise, and providential. Uh -huh. There's one more point I must bring out. Uh -huh. The first five points are all of God's parts is providential because it is he that is doing the work. It's progressive because he is taking us from glory to glory. Yes. It's positive because he is doing a good work. Yes. It's personal because it's inside me. Yes. It's promised because he is faithful to complete it. Yes. The sixth point is revelation. Yes. Six is the number of man in revelation. Yes. Revelation 13 8 says, Here is wisdom. Let him, have, let him that have understanding count the number of the beasts. For it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred three score and six. Man was created on the sixth day. The sixth point is your part in this construction project and process. It's praise. Psalms one fifty and six. One, Psalm the hundred fifty division of Psalms says, "Praise ye, that's you and me. That's our part. The Lord, that's He who is doing the work. Praise God in His sanctuary. That's another word for temple." 1 uh -huh. Corinthians 6 and 19. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, uh -huh. 
which ye have of God, and ye are not your own. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. The construction work he's doing in me and you right now. Praise him according to his excellent greatness, the great God. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him. Praise him with, the, with your dance. Praise him with your string in, instruments and organs. Uh -huh. Praise him. Praise Pastor, him. is there any benefits to praise? Yeah. Uh -huh. Let's just name five quick benefits. Uh -huh. Praise. Remember, five represents grace. Yes, uh -huh. His presence. When you praise God, you are bringing down his presence yes. because he inhabits the praise of his people. Yes, Psalms 104. His power. When you praise God, he manifests his power. Acts 16, 30 through 31. His power saves, heals, and delivers. His glory. When you praise God, the glory of God comes down. 1 Kings 8, 10 through 11. Next is his anointing. The anointing destroys the yoke. Isaiah 10 and 27. And it shall come to pass in that day that his burden shall be taken away from off thy shoulder, and his yoke from off thy neck, and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. New Heights, I am confident that the work he has begun in you and me, he will carry it to completion until we are conformed into his image, until he brings us into eternal life. It is then and only then will it work. He began in us before we were formed in our mother's belt. Yeah. Yes, he did. So until I will bless the Lord at all times, yeah. and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Yeah. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Uh -huh. Let us exalt his name together. Yeah. It is said that the wife of Billy Graham yeah. has on her tombstone these words, yeah. end of construction. Thanks for your patience. Tell somebody, please be patient with me. God is not through with me yet. But when God gets through with me, I shall come forth in his image and likeness. But in the meantime, you are looking at me. But I got some news for you. I am under construction. This morning, my brothers and sisters, I want to tell you that the Lord is still working on us. He's still doing in us that thing that he wants to do. I'm getting ready to close. But let me tell you, I'm so glad that he's working on me. I'm so glad that the same God that said in the beginning, he said, let there be light. And there was light. It's the same God that's working on me. God that was with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who were about to be barbecue items in that fiery furnace. It's the same God that is working on me. The same God that came in Jesus Christ, that healed the sick and raised the dead. It's the same God that's working on me. Did you hear what I'm saying? I'm closing when I tell you. I told the Lord, Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true. With thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary for you. Yes, sir. Maybe you can relate to this one. I was a lonely idol. I was a sinner too. But I heard a voice from heaven saying there is work to do. I took my master's hand and I joined the Christian band. And I am on the battlefield for my Lord. Is there anybody here? Are you on the field? Anybody in here serving the Lord with all that you have? Is he working on you right now? Grab your neighbor by the hand and tell your neighbor, be patient with me. God ain't through with me yet. He's working on me. Ain't he all right? Ain't he all right? Let me tell you, you who he is that's working on me, that's
They hung him high. They stretched him wide. For me, he died one Friday. But early Sunday morning, he got up with all power. I said all power. Wonder working power. Healing power. Saving power. Delivering power. Moving power. Lifting power. Way making power. Supplying power. He's not through with me yet. Something on the inside. Working on the outside. Oh, what a change in my life. You see, my life is a mess. That's being in a construction zone. I don't know if you're ever going to notice this, but usually they have signs up at the construction zone. That says men working. Well, I got a man working, and he's working on me. Then there is a sign that says detour here. Well, that means when the devil tries to block my path, or he thinks he can get in my mind, and I feel like I'm at a dead end, there is a detour here. In other words, he's making a way out of no way. Can I get a witness this morning? Anyone ever been there before? a sign that says one lane, one lane ahead. I'm here to tell you God's got a way that you can't go over. God's got a way that you can't go under. God's got a way that you can't go around. But you must come in at the door. I'm here to tell somebody this morning who may not know he is the way, the truth and the light. If you want to see Jesus, you got to live right. You must be saved and free from your sins. Marvel not. You must be born again. You must come in at the door. But then last, but not least, there's usually a flat man. It's all right. Then last, but, but not least, there's usually a flat man. Well, I've been the flat man before. Well, I don't understand. I didn't know you worked at a construction zone. No, that's not what I did. What I'm saying is, if I couldn't say a mumbling word, I was the flag man. If I couldn't say a mumbling word, I would just wave my hand and say, Father, I stretch my hand at thee. Father, if you don't help me, I won't be able to stand the storm. Do I have any flag men in here this morning? Will you stand up on your feet and wave your hands and say goodbye to all your troubles and say hello to tomorrow. I don't know about you, but I'm on my way. I'm on my way. He's working on me. Well, while you're waving your hand, he's holding your hand. Won't he come see about you? I'm so glad that he's not through with me. Every step I take, he's working on me. Every move I make, he's working on me. I don't know about you, but I'm going to run on and see what the end's going to be. Are you all right? Are you all right? Say yeah. Say yeah. Do you know him? Have you tried him? Has he been good? Can he come see him about you? Say yeah. Say yeah. I know he's all right. One of these old days, when I finish this old race, I got one more sign waiting for me. Railroad cross, crossing. Back that train and get your love. I'm going home on the morning train, the evening train. It might be too late. I don't know about you, but I'm under construction. And I refuse to throw in the tail. Because guess what? I'm already a finished product. Ah. Uh -huh. Always remember you are working.